Google just had their IO event, which is their developer focused conference that had a lot of announcements in them, among them being a lot of AI tools that they're providing to us. One of them in particular, I wanna talk about in this video, and that is Jules. Jules is their asynchronous coding agent. The idea behind it is that it can work behind the scenes autonomously and build out functionality in your application or build out whole feature sets in your application, depending on how much you wanna allow it to do. And the great thing is it will open up a PR against your GitHub repository so that you can review those changes and see if you wanna merge them or not. So what are some of the things that they say it's good at doing? Writing tests, building new features, audio change logs. Don't know what that means necessarily, but it can fix bugs and it could bump dependency versions if you'd like too, to keep those up to date because we know that can be a headache in the development world. But enough about what it is and what it does. Let me show you what it's like using Jules. All right, the first thing you need to do is go to jules.google.com so that you can get, start getting access to the tool. It's in public beta right now, so anybody can sign up for it. You just need a Google account. Once you're signed into your Google account in the Jules app, you're going to be presented with this screen here where it's going to prompt you to connect your GitHub account to get started. So you're going to click on that, sign into your GitHub account, and then you're going to choose whether you want to give it access to all of your repositories or just one particular repository. So for this case, I recommend just choosing one repository to test it out and see what you think. Then once you've given Jules access to your GitHub account and the repositories you wanna allow it to use, you can select which repository you wanna work on for this prompt that you're about to give it, or you can add a new repository. And then from there, you can choose which branch you'd like to work off of to start from the source. Keep in mind, it will create its own branch, so you don't have to worry about or think that it's gonna make changes directly to your main branch. It's only gonna create a PR for you and not affect the main branch that you have here. I added it to my AI code security repository, which is a mono repo of all the code output from any AI code generation tools I've used in the past and evaluated. So you can check that out. Link will be in the description below, but I wanted to work off of that same mono repo. So I told it to create a new folder in the repository, name it Google Jewels. That way it keeps all the code separate and in an isolated folder like I do with all the other models that we've used in the past. And then I gave it the typical prompt, which if you're not familiar with this, the short thing is I tell it to create a note application, note taking application essentially. And I make sure to emphasize to the model that this has to be a secure and production ready application so we can evaluate the code that it generates better. One other thing worth noting with this is they also call out that Jules can make mistakes. So double check it and use code with caution. And it's great that it also isolates the changes to a separate branch so that it can open up a PR with that. So once I sent that prompt into Jules, it went off and running. We could see it set, set up the project by creating a new directory. It gives me all the details of how it's going to work on that prompt to fulfill the end result. Then it set up a database for me. It's proceeding with SQLite for local development. It recommends that we use Postgres for production. Throughout all this, it is taking into consideration a lot of security best practices like authentication and authorization that might need to be done the typical CRUD operations we would need for a note-taking application. And like I said, security best practices, HTTP headers, security headers that we would need, rate limiting, cross-site request forgery mitigation, and so on and so forth. All, right, all of that outlined here. So it created this plan basically. In addition to that, it had testing, documentation, and then it goes and submits the changes in a commit message that describes the changes that it made. So all of that was it preparing the work that it was going to do for the changes that it needed to make based on the prompt I gave it. So then I had to approve the plan and I said, okay, go ahead, run with it. So that's really cool because if you don't like the plan or there's certain things about the plan that you need it to tweak, you can catch it early on before it actually starts making any changes to your project. Once I approved it, it ran through a couple things. It had a few hiccups. As you can see, it was able to make the directory Google Jewels and then change into that directory and initialize the project with NPM. But after that, it tried to CD into Jules again, run NPM install, and it ran into an error. It recognized this, that there was no such file or directory for the CD Google Jules. It was already in the Google Jules directory. That's cool that it recognized the error and realized that within Jules, there's an app parent directory that it needs to CD into first, and then it can run the extra commands that it wants to run. Skipping ahead a little bit, it ended up just creating a bunch of files, npm installing dependencies, implemented authentication. So then about 12 minutes after prompting Jules, it got to this point where it went to install developer dependencies for writing unit tests against the project. In which case it failed a couple times, but finally was able to successfully run the tests. 
and we could see it found that its testing was completed and felt everything was good to go from there. Test database is in memory for isolation, which is a really cool feature that it added to the project. Then it completed its documentation and then it got to the point where it was ready for me to review. So it tells me that it finished implementing all the new changes for the application, told me about the project structure, and we could see that it took a total of 17 minutes to do that. And then it gives me this button on the right hand side that allows me to view the branch that it created in my repository for the changes that were made. But if I don't want to do that just yet, you can actually see all the code changes on the right hand side over here from the tool. So you can tab through all of these if you'd like, expand and look at the whole file and folder structure on the right hand side. For a better environment to review all this is going directly to GitHub and looking at the PR there. So let's go do that. And here is the PR where it has a ton of detail to it all the way from the title into the description of it, where it describes exactly what's going on in this pull request and a rundown of the key features that the tool created for us. Jules, Google Jules created for us. So without having to reiterate all that, we can then look at the files change. We see that there are 26 file changes all from one commit. And then we can go in and review all the changes. It created an ENV file, a database file configuration, some controllers, some middleware models, some front end UI routes. And then in addition to that, of course, are the tests. So the next step from here, if you're using Google Jules, is to go through with a fine tooth comb, evaluating all the code that it created for you to make sure it's following your own best practices and patterns that you want for your project that you're building out. In addition to that, you need to check it for security considerations to see if there are any issues in that regard. One of the ways that you can get help with that and automating it is using Sneak's PR checks. Let me show you how to get started with that. First off, let me show you the end result of having a repository that's already hooked up to Sneak that does these PR checks for you. In doing so, when the PR gets open, Sneak will automatically detect that and run its checks against it. So it failed on this particular check doing code analysis. It found four issues there. And then when it comes to the manifest changes detecting in 12 projects right now, because again, it's a mono repo, it didn't find any issues there. But I'm going to show you something in that regard as well. Once Sneak has run its check on this one in particular, I want to see what is wrong. I can click on this and it brings me over to Sneak to show me the issues that it found with the code changes that are there. And then we can evaluate whether these are indeed issues that we need to consider or we can safely ignore. So in this case, this being a test CSRF hard-coded secret, it's not really that big of a deal because of the fact that this should only be running when the environment is set to the test environment when we're running our test against it, just for an example. But there could be more serious issues that you need to take a look at that the AI generated for you. All right, so how did I get this set up? Well, you head on over to sneak.io and sign up for account. One of the ways you can do that is by signing in with your GitHub account. That way you already have that integration set up and you're good to go and start using your repositories within Sneak. Once you are signed up for Sneak with your GitHub account, you can head on over to the top right-hand corner and click on the Add Projects button and then click on GitHub. Then from this view, what you can do is you can filter in on the repository that you want to choose. You select that and then you click on Add Selected Repositories in the top right-hand corner here that will trigger Sneak to import the project and run the scans, the security scans against the repository for you. Once the import is done, you can find your project under the project view on the side navigation bar there. Here I can see that AI code security repository I mentioned earlier. In here, we can see being that it's a mono repo, I have a bunch of projects with a bunch of issues in it, but I can filter into whichever part of that project I want to see what Sneak found for that. So in this case, I wanna look at code analysis. I can see all the code analysis issues that were found in the scan by Sneak. With your project successfully imported into Sneak, we can now set it up to add the PR checks or whenever a pull request is open against that repository in GitHub. The way you go about doing that is by heading on over to the settings view from the navigation bar. Once you're in the settings view, you're gonna to wanna to head on down to integrations and click on GitHub. Once you click on that, you're gonna scroll down and you'll see a lot of features and options here. Feel free to read through those and enable any that you want, but in particular for the security checks on your pull request, you're gonna head on down to pull request status checks and make sure that you have this enabled for the open source security and licenses if you'd like. And you can decide whether you want it to only fail for higher critical severity issues or only fail when the issues found have a fix available. And then you click save for that. In addition to that, if you wanna use Sneak to analyze the code that the AI generated for you, not just the dependencies it chose to use and the license it chose to use, you need to enable the code analysis functionality too, which is using Sneak code to check for security issues there. In that case, you check off enable here and then choose what 
conditions you want to use for failing, what level of severity you want to have the PR fail this check. So in this case, I have it set to high, but you can drop it down to low if you'd like even. There you have it. You've successfully set up a security check using Sneak for any PRs opened by Google's Jules AI. Now there's one other thing I want to show you that'll help you ensure the security of the output from AI models such as Google Jules. But before I share that tip with you, be sure to like the video down below and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks. In addition to having the security checks in the repository level for pull requests, I highly recommend you pull down that branch locally to test things out yourself and go more in depth with it. One of the reasons I want you to do that as well is so that you can use the security tool extensions that are available in the various IDEs that Sneak has for you. In this case, I'm using Sneak in Visual Studio Code and I have this tab here that will then scan the project while it's sitting locally. In doing so, I'm able to see at a more fine grained view just for this particular part of the project in the mono repo, any issues that it found in the open source dependencies that the AI model provided for us. In addition to that, any code security vulnerabilities that are raised in there. One of the things I noticed with running this locally and setting things up on my machine is that I NPM installed the dependencies and therefore Sneak was able to find that there were some issues with the dependencies that Google Jules provided to us. In this case, there's a medium severity issue found in this CSERF NPM package that it's telling us to use as a dependency. In addition to that, there is a vulnerability found in this in-flight module that is a transitive dependency from the SQLite module that we're depending upon directly. So there you have it. Two ways to catch security issues, both locally, when you're actively developing in your IDE and at the PR check level. Now with Google Jewels behind the scenes, it's using Google Gemini 2.5 Pro. So we're getting similar results to when I used the model in the past. So not a huge difference, but the fact that it's automated and running in its own environment, instead of me having to run locally, the Google Gemini Pro model in an agentic mode on my machine, I can set it off on its own and let it do its thing and then check later to see and review the results of that. So that's really cool about this. How are you gonna use Google Jewels in your workflow? I'm curious, let me know in the comments below. But that does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.